Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Sam. I am a professional hairdresser, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to give yourself long curtain bangs or face frame layers, angles, whatever you want to call it. Even if you want to cut shorter bangs than what I did on myself, you absolutely can. The length is really up to you, but this technique is going to give you that like swoopy face frame when it goes from shorter in the front to gradually longer. I'm going to show you how to achieve it so that it's nice and blended. You don't have any choppy looking pieces. And at the end, I'm going to show you how to style them so that you can get the swoopy swoosh effect. All you're gonna need for this tutorial is a comb, some hair cutting shears. You don't wanna just use some craft scissors or kitchen scissors because you won't get a sharp, clean enough cut. And that's how you can end up with a choppy look or causing damage to your hair and splitting your hair strands which you don't want to do. You can get these pretty much at any drugstore, Target, Walmart, Amazon. I'll have a link in the description. And then some kind of clip or hair tie, something to just pull the rest of your hair out of the way. So I recommend doing this on wet hair. It's just easier to cut. You'll also get a cleaner cut doing it on wet hair. So I'm brushing everything back, making sure there's no tangles in my hair. And then I'm going to take my comb and I'm gonna create a middle part. Once you have your hair parted down the middle, you're going to determine how thick you want your bangs to be and where you wanna create your bang section. You can just eyeball this based on preference or what I like to do, place the comb on top of your head and the point where it starts to lift off and it's not making contact with your head anymore, that's the point where you want to start your bang section. This is the best way to determine the thickness of your section based on your particular head shape. So you want to try to make sure that you are getting this section as clean as possible. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect because once it's dry and down and styled and all that, you're not going to notice if like a couple hairs are out of place, but... I always say, anytime you're doing anything with your hair, it really pays to take your time when you're sectioning in the beginning, because that can really make all the difference. Now that I have my bang section, I'm gonna take everything else in the back, and I'm going to clip this out of the way, because obviously we're not cutting any of that. So from here, you want to determine where you want your bangs or your face frame to start. What do you want the shortest piece to be? And remember, your hair is wet. So once it dries, it is going to bounce up a little bit. So I suggest wherever you think you want it to start, I would cut a couple inches below that. And also, if you've never had bangs before and you're kind of unsure of how they're gonna look on you, start a lot longer and then slowly cut more and more and work your way shorter and shorter. Just to be on the safe side, trust me, you can always cut off more hair. You obviously can't put it back once you've cut it all off. One thing to consider when you're doing this is, do you want to still be able to tuck these pieces behind your ears? Is it gonna be annoying for you to have short pieces like constantly falling in your face? I think I'm gonna start mine like right in the center of my mouth. So we'll be cutting about that much off. So now that I know where I wanna start, I'm going to grab a little small piece of hair from either side of my part and i'm going to pull this down to the middle bring it down to the length i want but keep in mind i'm pulling it down taut and it's also wet so i want it to fall about here when it's dry so i'm going to cut it a little bit below that. So right there is where I'm gonna start. Now you could just go in and cut horizontally, but that's gonna create a really blunt line. And I like these pieces to be as blended as possible. So I'm actually gonna cut into them vertically. Be very careful when you're doing this that you don't cut your fingers. And then let it go and see where it falls. So it's a teeny bit longer than where I want it. So I'm gonna cut again. 
bringing it up just a little bit really just take your time with this and be slow if you try to rush through this you might end up regretting it <laughs> so now I have my starting pieces and this is going to now be the guide that I'm going to use when I'm cutting the rest of it so I'm going to tuck one side behind my ear get it out of the way I'm going to do one side at a time so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another little bit of hair and I'm going to comb it across to the other side of my head and you want to make sure that you can still see that first section that I cut sticking out if you can't see the first section then take a little bit less hair it's very important that you can see exactly where your guide is you don't want to be guessing with this because then otherwise it's not going to come out right. So again, I'm cutting into it. Nice and slow, make sure you don't cut yourself. And you can see how we're already now creating an angle. It's going from shorter to longer. By over directing the hair this way and cutting it all to the same point, when you bring it back over to this side, it's going to have that angle. So we're going to do the same exact thing. Grab another small piece of hair, comb it over, bring it to the other side. Make sure you can see that guide and cut this hair to the same length. Another thing I wanted to point out is you can see as I'm taking this hair I'm combing it over. I'm holding it between my pointer and my middle finger with the opposite hand that my scissors are in, my shears, I should say. And I'm holding it there to see where I need to cut it. But then in order to see what I'm doing, because the mirror is kind of far from me, it's easier for me to hold it in front of my face and see this way. But you want to make sure that you are not moving your fingers at all. You want to keep that same exact tension because you want the hair to be cut from here. So as long as you don't lose the tension in your fingers, then you'll be good. And you can move it wherever you need to move it so that you can see it. Because it's really important whenever you're cutting your hair that you have as much control as possible and that you can really see what you're doing so that way you know that you're cutting in the right place, but also so that way you don't accidentally cut yourself. So now taking this last piece, just doing the same thing, cutting into it, just making sure that all the hair in this section is cut. You see that? It's all cut to the same point, but you see how it's really jagged. It's not a super blunt, clean line. That's what's going to make it softer and make it more blended. So now we have one side done. Now I'm going to do the next side. You can see my hair starting to dry. So I'm going to wet it. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we did on the other side. Take a small piece of hair. Make sure this side is tucked out of the way. And if you cut it too short so that you can't put it behind your ear, just use a clip or something to keep it out of the way. Home, over, there's my guide. Once you have both sides cut, re-wet everything 
and then comb through and check your work and make sure that everything is about the same length. It's looking like this side came out a little teeny bit shorter than the other side, like barely, by maybe a quarter of an inch. But it's enough that I notice it and it bothers me. So I'm gonna go back through. Since I already cut the bulk of the length off, I'm gonna take it all as one section. I'm just gonna pull it across. And I'm just cutting a little tiny bit off, cutting into it vertically. Check again. Now that looks good. You can go through and pull the pieces inward towards your face. You're not going to get the full effect though until it's all dry and styled. So I'm going to show you how to style them to get that nice swoopy face frame look. Okay, I blow dried and styled most of my hair, everything in the back. Now I'm going to show you how to style your new curtain bangs to give them a nice little swoop. So it's pretty simple. All you have to do is take a curling iron or a flat iron. I usually find a curling iron is easier and you just want to twist ever so slightly and just pull back going away from your face. You don't want to actually wrap it fully around the barrel because you don't want to necessarily curl it. You just want to give it a little bit of a bend and a swoop. Just pull it back towards the back of your head. So you can see how we have our nice little angled swoop and it's shorter and then gradually gets longer but it's really soft and blended. There's no choppiness at all. And I love it because then anytime you want to wear your hair pulled back, you have these cute little pieces that fall out in the front. So I love this, like just pulling everything back and putting it in a little claw clip and having these front pieces, or you could do like a half up kind of thing with the little pieces down in the front. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and you found it helpful. Hopefully it was easy to follow along. It's kind of tricky to do stuff like this on yourself and then also make sure that the camera is getting the right angles and showing everything properly. So I hope that I was able to explain it well. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out a lot. I have a lot more tutorials like this one on my channel and I also do weekly vlogs on a regular basis. So if you like that kind of content, make sure to subscribe. Also, feel free to follow me on Instagram and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye!